So, Sam, so you're presenting the awards this evening, are you yeah. excited? Yeah, I'm really excited, yeah. How long have you been booked for the Uh About two months. I looked online, I was looking for broadcasting opportunities, and it said, Will Bites volunteering sitters of TV. And I just clicked onto the button, I had to register, answer a few questions about certain videos. And I was so keen, I rang up and made sure I knew what date the open day was. And I came, and as soon as I got here, I was like, this is a great platform for me to try and progress in my career. Excellent. And uh, what, what, what else do you like about World Bites and World Ride? Um, I love the nature of the whole thing. I think it's so homely and welcoming. I think Kerry's a great director. Um, she's very honest, and you can tell she loves what she does, and that energy and passion is translated within the work that happens here and I just feel so comfortable and I just really want to learn and do well and I want to help World Bites as much as possible. You're nominated for an award for Best Reporter this evening. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, obviously, I feel quite honoured to be nominated. Um, and it would be great if I won, but you know, obviously there's other really great contenders, so we'll see how that goes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good, evening. Good, evening. Good evening, and welcome to World Bites fifth anniversary birthday party and awards. My name is Safai McIntosh, and I'll be presenting tonight. In our fifth year as a pioneering citizen TV station, we are delighted to be able to honour some of our volunteers and contributors for their great work. Over the last five years, we've made over 600 programmes and over 1,000 volunteers have learned to shoot and make quality broadcast programs with us. We have had over a million viewings of our programs and many of our programs have enduring value. It's been very hard to shortlist programs tonight. These awards, we are delighted, have been voted for by several hundred people. So let's look at the nominations for the most inspiring short report. go to the MP's house to check if he's doing the right thing. That's why I buy the sun and I buy the newspapers. So yes, freedom, freedom of the press must be allowed. The winner of the most inspiring short report will take on a World Bites mug, a goodie bag and a pair of tickets for the Pitch House Cinema in Hackney and tickets for the Rosemary Branch Theatre. Special thank you to the Pitch House and Rosemary Branch for sponsoring our awards. And the winner is... Drum roll please. Making history, John Will's Forgotten Hero. Yay! And we would like to present this award to two volunteers who made their presenting debut on this report. Ekanam Robinson and Juliet Nagala. Please come up and accept your award. We're going down into the inner temple where the Hellfire Club met. In good old tabloid doorstepping style, I've come to find out why. Mr Hughes. Thank you very much for this award. Um, I've loved working with um, World Bites. It's been a very educational experience and I've learned so much and it's opened my mind to a different way of thinking. So, yeah, it's something that I feel I will carry with me for the rest of my life, hopefully. And, yeah, thank you. Can I just say something? I, I just I, I have to reiterate what she said. She said everything that I would have said. I've absolutely adored being here. And should I take the time to take, thank my mother, my father, my mom, my dad? I had this all prepared. Actually, this is such a shock. I didn't expect this. Thank you very much. To be a successful World Bites reporter really requires knowing your stuff. You don't need a great CV. You don't need a-levels, you don't need PhDs, but you need a passion to explore and really investigate a subject. And you need guts. It really does take guts to go out on the streets and ask difficult questions and be prepared to argue with people. And we take the public very seriously in all our reports, something we feel that politicians certainly don't do. So we don't write off the public as Daily Mail readers or as an ignorant mass in need of educating or as people who necessarily know less than us. And of course, we're not interested in the one sentence sound bites, which much of the news uses, which really echoes mainstream and government opinion, and from which we learn very little. So congratulations again to all our reporters. There's been many more. We only didn't want to show you endless clips tonight, but I think 
the few you've seen sum up what's possible? Do you think sometimes that's much more about us being able to sleep better at night and about our morals rather than what's right and what's a practical need for the people of Syria? And the winner is, Juma please, Saliha Ali. Please come up and accept your award. Saliha, would you like to give us a few words, please? Thank you everyone, I guess, for voting for me. Obviously, it's been a real pleasure and I, it's been a real honour to be part of World Bites and to be here today to uh, celebrate in its success. Uh, it makes you think and it makes you rethink and I think that's really, really important. So, yeah. There are far too many people from the last five years to thank for allowing us to film them, for sharing their wisdom with us, and often their contribution has put our programs on the map. And one of the things that we should recognize about being a guest expert for World Bites is that we need subjects who are prepared to come to Hackney, to our little center, for absolutely no money or, or reward, and be prepared to be challenged by a whole bunch of volunteers that they've never ever met. And I think just for doing that, really, our guest experts deserve a medal and their contribution really has made and inspired our programs so let's find out who's going to get the medal the winner of the best guest expert takes home a world bites goodie bag of course and a meal for two up to 50 pound donated by meat mission in shoreditch thank you to the restaurant for that and the winner is of the best guest expert drum roll please cow Sharon. There's a difference between genuine solidarity and a form of moral superiority that sees ourselves as the saviour, and perhaps here in the West. And under the pretense of helping people, we might end up doing more damage uh, than not. Yeah, unfortunately, Carl didn't get the uh, World Right uh, work ethic memo, which is, are you dying? No, carry on. These nominees have taken camera work really seriously. And by really seriously, it isn't just about great framing or amazing exposure, but it's about considering how you do justice to an issue and how you're going to bring it to life visually and convey it. And I'd really like to congratulate these nominees who've steadfastly done some exceptional work. In the early years of World Bites, Dan broke his neck, but he'd been working on a programme on unemployment in London, so he was really determined that even with a broken neck he was going to shoot it and he did now that's commitment for you and the winner of best camera work goes to Jim Robbins, Dan Clayton come up and accept your award I've been inspired with the idea that you can take uh, a camera and do some serious uh, documentary journalism uh, with a camera. But thank you very much. Volunteers who have done this kind of work, and they've done a huge amount of it over the last five years, have been really doing it from home or on begged or borrowed gear. And they've done it not because they see volunteering with World Bites in an instrumental way, one that's going to just give them new skills and you know, get them on in life, which we're all for people getting on in life, obviously, but because they see the content matters and they want to add to it with their creative skills. And I think that's at the heart of volunteering with World Bites. For everyone involved, the content really is key. So well done to all the nominations. And the winner is, drum roll please, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, we have a tie. We have joint winners and they are Tizania Fafaro and Jessica Knight. Please come up and accept your award. I don't think there's really an awful lot more to say than has already been said, but I think World Bites has definitely enabled me to be able to realise that animation can be used in a way that's not just making pretty pictures. It can be used to say something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more against the grain. Um, so I don't know. No? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's been
been numerous contributors to our programs and numerous contributors who have really inspired us and we're very, very grateful for their highly informed contributions. Lastly, we do wish that Millie from Ghana, who you've just seen, could be with us tonight, but the Home Office won't let her back in, as they've said she's inappropriate. And that's a euphemism for being a poor person. But we do hope in future, obviously, that that can all change. As most of you will know from our commitment and programmes on open borders, we don't approve of the government deciding who we can work with, who can be our, in our crews, and who we can even be friends with. The winner is, drum roll please, Professor Mary Davis for her inspiring contribution in Sylvia Pankhurst, Everything is Possible. Please come up and accept your award. I'm very, very grateful um, it was a great privilege to have about 120 of you in my, in my house, in my front room. Um, and it was very hot that day. I do remember, and I remember you, by the way, um, asking very, very intelligent questions. I really am very, very grateful that you really took the time to read the book, discuss, you'd obviously discuss the book, and when you came to ask questions, they were so informed. I just wish my students were like that, but they're not, you know. I mean, I don't do much teaching now, but you were great. So I think World Bites is a wonderful organisation, and I think you're all wonderful. I don't know if it's all of you, I mean, there's too many here to fit in. My <laughs> you know, you, you were great. Um, I don't know how it came about, how the choices were made, but all I can say is, I think it was a very sensible choice. <laughs> Before we move on now to our grand unveiling, which I know you've all been waiting for, oh, yeah. and a few of you have been peeking at it, I'd like to introduce you to an extra special guest for tonight, Mubin Huck, who is the Director of Policy and Grants at Trust for London. Trust for London really were our founding funders for World Bites, and Trust for London really have put their money where World Bites' mouth is. As have, I must say, Bloomberg and the Esme Fairburn Foundation, and I would like to thank John for coming here tonight. And I just want to say something about the artwork that Mubin is going to unveil. It was taken by a photographer called Chris Sharp, and it's a picture from the Freedom to Film Day we organized in Hackney a few years ago for World Bites. Lots of volunteers turned out to make a stand after Hackney Council decided we'd need a license to even film in the park here and in the square locally. And we did have a one-day victory. It was a really good day. We didn't get a single policeman, Jobsworth, or bureaucrat crap stopping us. Like, trust me, we do every single day. And that problem hasn't gone away. And that's why we're running a big fun run in October under the banner Freedom to Film. So those of you who fancy 5K, we need you to run with us. And if you haven't already, to sponsor us. Because if we're not allowed to engage with people in public spaces, or to give people their say to camera without the council's authority say so, what sort of society are we creating? So for an image that rightly now adorns our centre, Mubin, will you pull the cord? <laughs> hey! I came here uh, about 10 years ago and I met Viv and Kerry and I thought that was challenging until I met the young people themselves which was even more challenging and it's great to be asked a huge amount of questions about um, what we do with, with our money uh, as well as me asking them those difficult questions too and money well worth spending really because the issues which we've seen tonight um, aren't the ones you see on TV normally um, and so it's been a great privilege to see the young people here uh, make programmes about these issues. Um, so another five years, another ten years, hopefully it goes on to uh, many better things. Great.
I've done all sorts of things for World Ride. I've interviewed economists about the idea that we should value people's happiness over GDP. I've uh, reported from demonstrations. Um, I've um, been, been a, a presenter on um, panel shows where we offer questions and um, interrogation to members of parliament and experts um, on a wide range of things. World Right is evidence that a small organisation can make an impact, and I've no doubt that they do make an impact. When I share the videos with my friends, they consistently provoke debate, they stimulate people to think about difficult arguments, and they provide a vital alternative to what is seen in the mainstream news. Okay, so what would you say is your favourite program or my program of documentary? Um, I've adored the documentary on Sylvia Pankhurst, which I thought was remarkably rigorous, well researched, um, clearly passionate about its subject matter, and a fantastic insight into a person who, for all intents and purposes, broadly has been ignored by the um, by our education system, at least her story is has never been told in the way that it was told in that documentary. So, Sylvia Pankhurst. I'm loving it. Uh, being surrounded by people that contributed so much to this organisation, um, you know, is amazing. You know, if you have the idea, um, they just give you support by, you know, offering you the camera, the equipment. But if you have an amazing idea, you can just create your own program, and that is great. Um, we have all the power in our hands. And uh, do, do you think a small organisation like this can really kind of challenge people and change people's minds? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's what they're doing is really, really brilliant. And it's, it's just like sharp, uh, short films that make a clear point to people, you know, engage uh, the people who are making them, because it's a great opportunity to discuss ideas with people who are making them as well as the people who are viewing them. Um, so absolutely, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's brilliant. And the, the fact that they've been going for so long and being able to keep up that energy and that sharpness in terms of their content is absolutely fantastic. I, I got involved with camera work and when World Bites launched, I became camera person and editor and uh, basically I do anything that's required of me, whether it be admin or film related. So, um, and I, up until recently I used to be in four or five days a week, so, and I really enjoy it. I mean, you look at the, uh, the kind of profile views it has, you, you, know, you see the fact that you're making films on topics that very few other people would have the intellectual bravery to do, would have the ability to put these films together on. And actually, yes, I think still produce actually a really interesting and provocative work. I think that's very important, and I think that's, they do that better than anyone else that I know. Uh, World Bites is the only charity I actually uh, support make any contributions to. Uh, the return rate is about 3 to 4 One is that they teach young people how to make films in a, in a totally professional way. But even more importantly than that for me, they teach me how to make an argument. Uh, I think the key to making these kind of films and items that they uh, uh, produce is to have an, an idea, a very clear idea, and then have a vision of how you want to make that come alive on the screen. And that's what Kerry and World Bites are so brilliant for. And I'm very happy to support them and I hope that uh, more power to their own way. Okay, Rob, you're the uh, project coordinator of the CLR James project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, the CLR James project is one where you know, we've basically got a whole a two-year project that we're we're looking to produce a, a full-length documentary on this CLR James who lived between 1901 and 1989, and he was someone who was a revolutionary um, and someone who. who Dipped his hand into many different areas and, and always produced some fantastically original work um, and sort of brilliant radical ideas which really challenged the ideas of the time. Um, and I think he's a fantastically interesting character that you know we haven't hasn't really had the sort of coverage that he really deserves.